Welcome everyone to another episode of the Intellectual Saviors of Wrestling with your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. And this is the Raw review from the 13th of March. Plenty to look forward to this time. Yep. Yeah. And we opened up the show with Rock. Oh my god. <laughs> and his name is Paul Heyman. Two weeks in a row. Jesus. They must be paying him some sort of decent wage. Yeah, and uh, Paul was basically explaining what's going to go down at WrestleMania. That's the one. And more importantly, down goes Goldberg. I know. <laughs> F5, Goldberg goes down. Yeah. No spear, no jackhammer. Down goes Goldberg. Well, I, I really just don't care about this match. It's been done twice and they've both been crap. I'm just hoping it lasts longer than a minute and a half. Here's <laughs> <laughs> <It is> hoping. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was about it. And then um, Heyman ran me to and said, And Goldberg! Is not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we knew he wasn't going to be there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, moving on from that, I suppose we'll move on to our first bit of action oh, of the night. Action. <laughs> it was a women's match. It was Sasha Banks versus Dana Brooke. Yeah, the, the, the story behind this, they did a pre-match thing with Charlotte and Dana Brooke. And Charlotte basically said... Indra, I don't want her to make it to WrestleMania. Yeah. That's apparently what Dana was going to go out and do. But it didn't work out like that. No, Sasha won with a roll-up. This was a very short match. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Charlotte was at ringside. Visibly unhappy. She just started screaming at Dana, what are you doing? Yeah. You're an embarrassment, this, that, and the other. And then finally, Dana snapped. Yes, in one of the most anticipated face turns of recent... Um, no. <laughs> I, I can't commit to that. They came to blows. Yeah. So, this must surely mean the end of the working relationship between Charlotte Flair and Dana Brooke. Great. Not that anyone really paid much attention. I mean, she's only recently just come back. Yeah. We'd all forgotten she was even still her protege. Yes. It had been a little while. But, yeah. Whatever. Now, cruiserweight action. Oh, this will pick things up. We've got a tag team match. Oh, no. We've got... The premier athlete, Pony Nice. Oh, Mr. Dumbbell himself. And let's not forget his tag team partner, the man with a plan, the Brian Kendrick. Not his tag team partner, only his Drew Gulak. <laughs> well, it was Brian Kendrick this week. Okay. And they were facing off against Akira Tazawa. Oh. And you can do this too. Oh, <laughs> the man himself, the Duke of Dab. Oh. Mega TJP. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, obviously mm. this is actually carrying on the rivalry between Brian Kendrick and Tazawa. Yeah. Which we're still trying to work out how it was just basically Tazawa rejected Brian Kendrick's friendship or whatever and yeah it's escalated from that and then Brian Kendrick's been teaching him life lessons for the last few weeks yes you would think they would put like a number one contendership on the line but that's apparently being done on two or five live so yep in yeah. a fatal five way match again okay, again <laughs> same as it was last month yep so, unfortunately, the man with the plan picked up the win with his plan. He did? Yep. 
Yeah, no, I believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to remember this one. Go on there. What was it? What do you do? Apparently, Tony Nice picked up the pinfall. Yeah, I think he did actually. Uh, with the running niece. Oh, very, very original. Yep, <laughs> continuing the trend of WWE's great finishing moves. Well, it doesn't uh, be the midnight hour. <laughs> what about the boot of doom? And then we had more tag team action. We had the United States champion, Chris Jericho. Yep. And Sami Zayn versus Samoa Joe uh -oh. and Kevin Owens. Uh, yeah, three Canadians and a Samoan from California. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, again, this match didn't particularly last long. No, it didn't. Because uh, it got ended with a disqualification. Yeah, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens were in the ring pounding on, who was it? I think it was Sami Zayn first. Yeah. And the ref was like, no, get out, come on, one of you has to get out. And he did his five count and went, no, throwing it out, DQ. Yeah. And Jericho came back in and tried helping out. But he got hit with a pop-up powerbomb. Uh, the exact same move that Jericho and Kevin Owens used to do, where he'd throw him up into the powerbomb. Well, Samoa Joe did it this time. Yeah, so apparently we're now getting a new... A Lines? Yeah. Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens. It's going to be the new Triple H guys. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Evolution 2.0. Oh, jeez. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> and guess what? What? More tag team action. Oh, for the love of God. Three in a row? This time, though, it was actually... Going towards something though, we had the number one contenders match for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Oh. The winners would go on to fight Gallows and Anderson at WrestleMania. Oh my god, <laughs> easy, Vince. <man. laughs> we, of course, have Enzo and Big Cass, and he had a mug that had a cup of haters written on it. <laughs> And they were fighting Guinness and bar fights. Oh, why are they still going with these two? I have no idea. Is there no one else? No other tag teams on Raw they could use? Yeah. Now, uh, this match was going fine so far. Uh, we Where they weren't alone for very long. No. Yeah, Gallows and Anderson come down. Started beating up on both tag teams. And then they went off backstage. They were then met by Mick Foley. And think, oh, you think this is funny? You think he's so clever? Well, guess what? Now you've got a triple threat match at WrestleMania. How's it going to work? Is it going to be Tornado? Please make it Tornado. I'm hoping so. Because if it's just a normal triple threat tag team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we must note as well start of Raw as well Stephanie said she was going to help Mick become a better person and a better GM he's got to fire someone by the end of the night oh dear and it was his decision who was going to get fired Ooh, that's so a tough one. we'll find out later on who that person was and it must be known as this was as the show was going on I listed five people who he could fire and no one would notice that was one of them. <laughs> but no, he actually appeared in a segment. Yeah. He was like, Mick, don't fire me. <laughs> I am main event talent. No, Let like, me prove myself. Okay, Jinder, you can have a match against Roman Reigns. Oh. <laughs> Which was right now. Yeah, <laughs> the next match. 
And it didn't go too well for Jinder. <sighs> Why? Why did they even bring Jinder back? I have no idea. Yeah, no shock. Roman Reigns picked up the victory in this one. He gave him a beat down. I think he gave him the Superman punch, what, three times? Something like that, yeah. And then much to our surprise, we then had a guest come down to ringside. A guest? It was none other than Mr. WrestleMania himself. Oh, my God. HBK. Sure, Mike. Yep, somewhere during this match, The Undertaker's gong went off. Yeah. And Sean was like, oh, you already heard the gong. He's already inside your head. Yeah, he's playing mind games with you. You're not going to win mind games against The Undertaker. And then Roman just turned around and said, this is my yard now. Undertaker should be scared of me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, God damn it. I just want to know where all of a sudden this cocky ego has come from Roman. It's literally happened in the last week. Mm. Maybe the, maybe this is the acceptance of, okay, it doesn't matter what we do, he's getting booed out yeah. of the building. Yeah, so he said, he said I'm, I'm ending The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I can't see that happening somehow. Yeah. So, Shawn Michaels just saw Terrence and blew out. Didn't say I didn't warn you. And then Roman ed- exited the ring. And then he got bulldozed by <laughs> Braun Strowman. <laughs> now, this was pretty funny. Because when he hit him, he sort of rolled and then went down a little gap between the ramp and the, the barricade. Yeah. And he received some medical attention. Braun! And if that wasn't embarrassing enough for him, the crowd were chanting... Thank you, Braun. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what you want to hear when you're laying on the floor. Yeah. Thank you, Strowman. <laughs> oh, and then we've got some more cruiserweight action next. But don't worry, it's not a tag team match. So, we had one of Sam's favourite, Araya Davari. Oh, God. And he's facing off against Double A himself, Austin Aries. Yeah, <laughs> greatest man they ever lived, and his very fluffy jacket. It's very fluffy. Yeah, he's giving up his journalist skills. <laughs> and he's getting back in the ring. Oh, I, I like Austin Aries on commentary. Yeah, and also gave Corey Graves an excuse to get away from Byron Saxton for a little period of time. So. You will not be shocked to know that Austin Aries dispatched of Davari very quickly. With relative ease. Yeah, he finished him off with that awesome spinning forearm punch. I'm not quite sure what they're calling it. I want to call it the Aries elbow. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm just trying to point as well. When at any point has Davari been been spoken of as the Persian line? Oh, the nickname's been around for a while. Oh, there you go. It's called the Pendulum Elbow. No, that's his elbow drop. That's where he goes. Uh, uh, That is actually an elbow drop. Discus Elbow, then, apparently. I don't like that name. They need to be more creative with that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh dear. God. Oh, dear. Uh, we got more singles action for you next. We've got the big show. After he was uh, in a backstage segment with the New Day. Yep, they've got a new talk show because everyone's got to have one. Yeah, and of course they had New Day pops with him. Yeah. <laughs> and for some reason. Still trying to work out why he even appeared. They were then interrupted by the brand Titus O'Neil. And and, and he just said, New Day shout, No, 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 no. Not again. No, not again. Go away, tight draws Titus. <laughs> tight, tight draws O'Neill. <laughs> who ruins everything. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't happy. He said he should have been in the new Jetsons movie. Yeah. And it was Big Show's fault. 
He loves the Jets. Yeah. So it then turned into a match. Now, as you have noted on many occasions, Curtis O'Neill has not won a match <laughs> since he's become the brand. <laughs> and it didn't improve <laughs> to this night either. Tonight was no different. <laughs> yeah, the Big Show made quick work of him. I think he, I think he got at least two choke slams. Yeah, it might have been three actually, because I think the crowd were chanting one more time. Yeah, and the Big Show did it a third time. Yeah, Big Show picked up the victory. Lost also as well. Announcing that he is going to be in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Yep. So that must surely mean now Shaq versus Big Show's off. It's cancelled. Shaq didn't want a, a big payday for 20 minutes work. 20 minutes? You think they've gone for that long? Just, just chucking a random figure out there. And on this episode right now, I'm announcing my entrance into the Andre the Giant <laughs> Memorial <laughs> Battle Royal. <laughs> wow. Who knew it? Even with a busted foot, yeah. he's entering. I'm going to use my crunch and crunch my way down to the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everybody else does it. Yeah. And then we had women's competition between the Raw Women's Champion Bailey and Nia Jax. Yeah, this was another one that was made backstage. And I said, I should be in the WrestleMania match. I want competition. I'm trying to make her into the female <laughs> version of Braun Strowman. I want competition yeah. now. Yep. <laughs> so Mick went, right, you want it. You're facing the women's champion. Yeah. Might have even been Steph. I don't know. Someone said that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was our match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what to say about this. Hmm. Boring, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the the problem is anyone that knows NXT at all knows that Nia Jax has faced Bailey quite a few times. So yeah. I don't think she picked up a single victory. One, I think. One when she injured her. Yeah. But I think it was only one. Yeah. So we Ah, but then uh, this one ended in disqualification. Yeah. She had Bailey in the tree of woe in the corner. Yeah, he was kicking her. And the ref was doing his count. I know you keep this off, I'm disqualifying you. And she just kept on going. Yeah. And that ended that one. Bailey picks up the victory. Yeah, strange that her best friend wasn't out there to save her from this one. Yes, very strange. Uh, and we uh, we got a teaser video afterwards for the return of Emma. Oh, no. We're done with Emmelina already. <laughs> After one appearance, <laughs> she's going back to Emma. Great. So the last three months have pretty much been redundant. Yep. So then this brings us to our penultimate part of the show. Who is Mick Foley going to fire? Uh, I'll give you the five names I thought of. Okay, this should be good. Mark Henry. Oh, yeah. Bo Dallas. But, but you've, you've got to Bo Lee. No one's seen him in months. <laughs> and, and, he, and he started growing a poor, poor man's white beard as well. Now. Oh dear. Let's not forget Curtis Axel. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about it. <laughs> exactly. He would have fired him and no one would have noticed. Uh, yeah. Of course, Jinder, obviously. Yeah. And here's one for you. Kane. Is he raw? I, I don't know. Like, I've completely... You might be right. I think he might be smacked down. Yeah, well, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, yeah he, he hasn't been seen in a while either. But no, all throughout, I was like, you know what, Mick ain't going to fire anyone, he's going to resign. Yep, so then, after Mick came to the ring, Stephanie was there as well. And Mick said, you know what, you should be fired. You, Stephanie! Yeah. <laughs> that didn't sit too well with 
The billionaire princess. No. He was like, you can't fire me. It's not in your power. This is ridiculous. And this brought out someone who we've seen a fair bit recently. The gay. Mr. Hunter Hurst you, you can't say that. You don't want to be reminded of that gimmick. <laughs> yeah. And then he just basically went on a big tirade and said how much of a joke Mick was and uh, get the hell out of his ring. Yeah, it's, it's... Triple H. Oh, God. You just go enjoy him being such a bastard. He plays a bastard so well. It's like when he was saying, oh, well, I'm going to fire your kid Dewey, who works in Stanford. Yeah. And your daughter, who's trying out for NXT. She ain't going to get it. <laughs> Mentioning uh, his busted ear and that his, he needs a hip replacement. Yeah. So he suggested he got out of the ring, tucked his tail between his legs. Which he did. But then someone else appeared. No, oh, no, he didn't appear yet. Mick got Mr. Sarko. Yes, how can we forget? He, he said, Mick, get out of the ring. And then he turned around, and Mr. Sarko. A throwback to many years ago. If you remember, Triple H and Mick had one hell of a rivalry. Gee. Very bloody. But no, he got hit with a low blow. <laughs> and Steph. Yeah. And it's... He took it hard. Oh. <laughs> but this brought out the architect, Seth Rollins, with his new t-shirt, oh. the King Slayer. Oh my God. And he, and he took one look at Triple H, and he dropped his crutch. <laughs> and he got in the ring and started putting the beat down on Triple. Oh my God. Unfortunately, at some point, though, Triple H grabbed uh, Seth's crutch and he proceeded to whack his knee a few times with it. Ooh, this actually made me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and as well, surprisingly, he didn't bother to call upon Joe to come out and put the beat down more on him. No, nope, didn't need him this time. No. Right. So no, and then he put him in, what, so like a reverse figure four? Can't yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, painful. It looked painful. Oh, it's like if Seth really is 100% healed, then god damn, he can sell a, a leg lock. Yeah, because you were thinking, no, he's gonna injure him again. Yeah, it was a bit awkward. To watch. I was like, this is one of the only matches on WrestleMania I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, and that was how we ended Raw. Yeah. If you weren't, if you didn't know it was 2017, Triple H on top. <laughs> Could be worse. Could be Randy Orton challenging for the title oh. in 2017. <clears throat> Again. Yeah. And we will get on to that very shortly. Yes. <laughs> when we get on to the SmackDown review. Radio. So, from your host, the Master of the Brain Damage. Martin. And the one and only Sam Age. We will see you again on the next one. Yeah, bye. <laughs>